Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coats on Back Order, and it's time for episode number 53 of our Pokemon Sapphire playthrough. As usual, taking a bit of a weekend hiatus from Pokemon Moon. I have some recovering to do after what happened in those last couple episodes, but if you haven't seen that, go check those out. Interesting situations to be said, for sure. Anyhow, here we are back in Victory Road in Pokemon Sapphire in the Hoenn region. In the last episode, we did start trekking through here. The idea is, I want to get to the Pokemon League and unlock that as a fly location, as well as the last place we need to get to is Pacific Log Town. And depending on how fast we get through Victory Road here in this episode, we might be able to do that today as well. And then I can start checking out the rest of the region, finding some hidden items and some other areas that I haven't just checked out yet. Try to get everything I can before finishing off our adventures in Gen 3 with the Pokemon Sapphire game, of course, and finishing the Elite Four. But first of all, since it has been about a week since we last saw this team, let's take a look at who we are working with. Everyone has pretty decent... I'm going to stop saying that right now. They don't have pretty decent HP. We're going to Super Potion up. But let's see who we are working with. Burrow is next in line for the level, so he is in first. That is very good. Burrow, the Ninjask, at level 41 with speed boost ability. Lonely Nature, boosting attack, dropping defense. And he's got a nice speed of 155. Attack is a nice, decent 106 also. Silk Scarf is the item to power up Slash and Cut. Also has Leech Life and Swords Dance. Next on the team, we have the Hariyama Bukemon, the normal buster of Petalburg Gym, as I've always said. Level 41 as well. Guts ability, boosting attack with a status condition. Lonely nature, just like Burrow, so attack up and defense down. Very slow, 59 speed, but makes up for that pretty much double. No, more than double with that attack stat. Is that more than double? Yeah, 118, 122. Yeah, that's more than double. 122 attack stat. Now, the Quick Claw is there to make sure that he can try to outspeed. I think it's like a 1 in 10 or maybe a 1 in 8 chance of the Quick Claw activating. But Fake Out always goes first. That is sort of a built-in Quick Claw, I suppose. Rock Smash, Belly Drum, and Vital Throw. Ah, Vital Throw. Watch Pokemon Moon episode number 24. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyhow, next we've got Dive Bomb the Gyarados, the newest addition to the team. New as of... How many episodes back? I'm going to say 6 or 7, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, level 41. Intimidate, dropping the foe's attack stat. Naive Nature, and that's it. I haven't looked it up again. I'm doing it right now. I'm tired of this. I never remember to do this. Okay, Google. Pokemon Nature Naive. I'll get to the bottom of this right now. Naive Nature, what do you even do? I'm going to say, let me see, okay. I'm going to see if I can guess it. Special Defense up. No, hang on. Speed up, special defense down, maybe? Just a random guess. Let's see. Naive is actually... Speed up and special defense down. Did I just say that? Is that actually what I just said? Naive nature, speed up, special defense down. I honestly don't remember what I said. I just threw two stats out there at random. I gotta go back and check and see if I was actually right with that random guess. Anyhow, let's move on with the team recap. Lacks incense, causing the opponent to possibly miss some hits. We've got a nice, powerful attack 119. Speed is at 94. Moveset is pretty much just HMs. Strength, dive, and waterfall, of course. Plus dragon rage just for some more, I guess, type diversity. As I said, once we unlock the last couple areas that we can fly to, I can then... Excuse me, something in my mouth. I can then, pardon me for that, start flying around to different areas, check out everything I can in the region, and finish off with using the HMs that I don't really need. Dive Bomb is definitely going to keep Dive, because that is in his name, of course, but probably going to replace Strength with something, maybe even Waterfall, too, since we don't need to use that once we've gotten all these secret items in the area. Next up on the team, Skippy the Swampert, level 42, our highest level, and our starter Pokemon from Professor Birch back in Little Root. Torrent Ability, Lax Nature, boosting his special, sorry, physical defense, dropping the special defense. He's got a nice, rounded attack and defense, both at 111, 110 each. The rest of the stats are pretty decent, but not terribly amazing. He's holding Soft Sand to power up that Mud Shot. He also has Surf, Foresight, and Rock Tune. Next on the team, if I hit down, there we go. Scruff the Manectric, level 41, with Static Ability. Relax Nature, upping defense while lowering speed. She has a whopping 107 special attack, our highest special attack on the team. Speed is very nice at 102 as well. She has the focus band because you can see the defenses are pretty bad. So she might survive a knockout using that focus band. Shockwave, Bite, Thunderwave, and Flash is the moveset. And last but not least, Majestic the Altaria at level 41. Natural Cures, healing status conditions upon switching out of battle. Naughty Nature, upping attack, dropping a special defense. Like how I said that, I don't know why I was going attack, but I did. Anyhow. Stats are all pretty good. Pretty much 80 to high mid-80s, high mid, high mid is that even a thing? Let's say mid-80s. 
King's Rock is the item to add flinching possibilities to Dragon Breath and Fly. Also has Dragon Dance and Safeguard. That is it for the team recap. Now, can we make it through the rest of Victory Road today? First of all, I want to heal up. I should have done this before the end of the last episode, otherwise I might have forgotten to do this. I have to try to keep that in mind, because I don't know how focused I'm going to be when I start a new episode of this. Now, I know I came from down below, so which way do we go to check out more areas here? Alright, Strength Puzzle. This is actually a pretty simple one. Push this boulder up once, and then to the left. Push the other one to the left, and hit that Rock Smash thing. Yeah, we got this. Hidden item, perhaps, for doing this. Actually, yes. What is the item waiting for us? Now, it's not a TM, because it's a red Pokeball, as we know. TMs are in yellow Pokeballs, and Gen 6 and up. Oh, I thought it was going to be a TM. But we got a full restore, which is certainly nothing to shake a stick at. So as I go through some random encounters, random trainer battles, I guess I can talk about my day a little bit. I've been on the hunt because my parents have tried to uh, decide what they want to get me for a Christmas present this year. And overall, I'm not entirely sure what I wanted. I'm going to say we can outspeed and run. No, wait, you're actually worth the experience. But I'm going to switch because Burrow can't handle you. Dive Bomb probably can go with dive bomb so what I really wanted to get I want to get not just one but two premium collections of the Mega Beedrill EX for Pokemon TCG the deck I made online is just so fun to use and it is quite successful I like to recreate that deck at the Pokemon League at Heroes Beacon whenever some trainers want to have an interesting battle and give them something really to uh, you know work for their money so to speak and I've been looking to try to get some copies of that collection. So I've gone around today, going to different stores, just to see, can I find it anywhere? As it turns out, there doesn't seem to be any left in my city. At least none of the stores that I went to. Even Heroes Beacon themselves said that they can't order any more, because I guess the uh, distributor is all out. So I decided I'm going to go check out PokemonCenter.com. That's where a lot of people get their specific Pokemon items at. And I can't even find it on there. So I might have missed the chance to recreate Stinger the Beedrill in Pokemon EX form in Pokemon TCG and that that is heartbreaking not really but certainly not very good now I would really like of course to be able to make a physical deck of these cards because I do have pretty much everything else I need for the deck that I made in the online game but of course I need the Beedrill EX and the other cards from the uh, premium collection to make good on that deck so Sure, I do have the cards in the online game, and I can use that anytime I want, but it's not quite the same, you know? Like, are you folks, for you folks out there that play Pokemon TCG, are you the same kind of person like me where, yeah, you can have a pretty interesting deck, but if it's not a physical deck of cards, it doesn't feel as real or rewarding? Because I think it's because it seems it's, like, easier to get the cards online. Now, hang on, let me think. You could have a powerful Psychic-type attack... We're gonna try for the slash, though. I'm gonna give Burrow a chance against you. Actually, you're gonna high jump kick. We can handle that. All right. Now, I believe I'm gonna go for the slash again. If we hit a critical, that'll knock you down. We don't. And you're gonna copy. You're gonna copy my speed boost. Fortunately, I get another one right now, so it's not gonna really matter at all. Another slash attack brings you down. In fact, cut could bring you down. In fact, leech life could bring you down. And it's not 80 power leech life like it is in Gen 6, or sorry, Gen 7, but it'll still do the trick, as you see there. It's still base 20 back here. It's so weird to think leech life has gotten a buff of all moves. Leech life? But it has. Alright, attack goes up by 2 to 108. Now we can switch Burrow out. But yeah, it's like, I think because you have much more access to trading with people online, that it doesn't feel as real. Like, I guess because there's less challenge and less, what you say, not risk of failure, but like less... I guess, I guess, greater chance that you're going to be able to get the cards that you're looking for online, because there's so many other people out there trading. Whereas in real life, it's a lot harder to find the cards you want for a specific deck. That's why I feel a little bit more, I guess, reward and satisfaction when I have an actual deck of cards that I can work with. Now, we're going to smash these rocks. This is easy, too. I just got to push the first boulder down, the second boulder up, gain access to a Pokemon hidden in the rock, first of all. So, hopefully, this thing's not going to blow up on us. Do I even bother going for the... No, it's too low, it's too low of a level. We're out of here, Graveler. You're going to explode on your own somewhere else, please. All right, let's break this rock and let's push these boulders away and grab whatever special item is over here. So, no attack. Okay. So, as I say, it's kind of... There's not even an item. 
Or is there? I don't know. Bear with me as I sort of get sidetracked as I'm watching the map. I'll try to keep things straight in my head, if possible. Which it might not even be possible. So there's not much we can do to this goal bat. We can't even flinch it because it has inner focus. So that is definitely a switch out into... Dive Bomb had a shot on the last one. Let's go into Scruff. She has the super effective shockwave. I think that's the best idea. I've been saying this whole time. When does she learn Discharge? Because she's known as the Discharge Pokemon, right? But I'm just trying to think. Is Discharge even in this generation? I might have seen it used against me, but I honestly can't remember. If she learns it, we'll find out eventually. If not, we'll probably never find that out because we'll just always be thinking. If we just pushed her one level further, would she have learned it? Alright, I think Bite Attack should get the knockout at this point. But, I'm kind of rambling about the Pokemon TCG. Essentially, I'd like to be able to make that deck of Beedrill in the actual cards, but if I can't, then I guess it's just not meant to be, unfortunately. This must be the proper way to go. Or did we fight you already? I think we have. So where am I going? A little bit lost. And it doesn't help that we can't see the entire area. So, Scruff, you're actually kind of weak. You know what? Let's let Majestic take this one. We're getting everybody some screen time this time. So what else was I going to talk about? Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> as I was walking around, going from place to place trying to track down this very hard-to-find Beedrill EX, sorry, Mega Beedrill EX Premium Collection, I did a little bit of Pokemon Go along the way as well, and I've noticed a lot of new species that, like, I've, I caught two new species of Pokemon in Go today that I never have caught before, and I wonder if they're doing this to sort of push the fact that, you know, maybe new Gen 2 Pokemon will be coming soon, so they're giving us maybe one last, I don't know, say a month or so, maybe a few weeks, for Pokemon that don't normally appear in the areas where we live, maybe other species that normally don't appear are becoming more common for us, giving us a chance to fill up the Pokedex a little bit more before Gen 2 hits. Because, you know, as soon as new Pokemon come out in the uh, Pokemon Go game, it's going to be less likely for each specific species to appear in the wild. I'm going to go Super Potion on Scruff as well. There we go. Almost a full Super Potion there. We lost one HP on that, but oh well. I honestly don't know where I'm going. We just fought that guy. Huh. So anyway, the species that I did encounter, I did find a Grimer, and I really like the nearby feature, because although it's, you know, people complain if they're like living in a rural area where there's not a lot of Pokestops, they don't really have many options to see Pokemon near stops, they've actually updated the game, from my experience, to show nearby, because I have one Pokestop near my house. Other than that, it wouldn't show anything else, right? But it does have, if you only have minimal amount of Pokemon nearby, it does have a sightings thing near your specific area, which is very good. So if you live in a rural area, you have two options, essentially. Shockwave connects. All right, we break through confusion. So one of the species that I did find was Grimer. As I was walking around, I saw the silhouette of Grimer, because I haven't even... I've seen one, but I've never actually encountered one. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen it on the map. But... I did see it near a specific Poke stop I was heading towards, and I just kind of hustled my way over there. And I found it, eventually caught it. I've been, I've been having a lot of trouble catching certain Pokemon in Go lately, though, because, like, let me give you a good example here. I encountered a Pidgeotto at one point, I think just yesterday. Don't hurt yourself, come on. You're gonna make me use a potion, aren't you? Okay, we got 23 Hyper Potions. I suppose we can use one Scruff. There you go. You were just thirsty, was all, wasn't it? Nope, that's actually not how you use the potions in this game. They're spray bottles, which is interesting. Every other game I know of where you have a potion, it's like a drink, you know? Anyway, potions are sprays here in Pokemon. Who knew? Well, everybody knew. Anyway, back to Pokemon Go. I was trying to capture some Pidgeotto. Did I come down from here, or did I... No, there's an item that I got here. Okay, so continuing on. Uh, found the Grimer. No, backtrack. Pidgeotto. It took... Over 20 Pokeballs, probably close to 23 Poke... 23, close to 30 Pokeballs, I don't know why I said 23. And a few berries as well, for the uh, Pidgeotto to finally be captured. I was throwing curveballs, I was getting great throws, I was actually doing really good. Ooh, thanks for weakening your HP. Vital throws a knockout at this point. And finally, after 20-some Pokeballs, close to 30, I caught the Pidgeotto. I continue on my way. Another one shows up. Now, granted, they were about... 900 CP, I think? I'm not sure if that's how high Pidgeotto can get or not, but they're a pretty high CP, and I did finally manage to catch them. Or no, the first one. The second one, after about 20 to 30 Pokeballs and a few berries, it ran away. That wasn't a fun day in Pokemon Go. Oh yeah, in between the two of those, I found a Santa Hat Pikachu. I was so excited. 
I threw several Pokeballs, it jumped and attacked, most of them. I finally got it in one, and then it goes ahead and breaks out and runs away. So as I say, that wasn't the best day of Pokemon Go that I've had thus far. But anyway, I had a pretty good day today. Grimer is one of the new species that I found. Shows the silhouette of nearby, and I went to the Pokestop and caught it. And then as I'm walking towards Hero's Beacon to check on if they can get the Beedrill Collection in or not, I see the silhouette of Onyx. I've never even seen an Onyx in my area ever since the game came out. Who needs the level next? It's going to be Scruff. So as soon as I saw that, it was in the park, which kind of a weird place for an Onyx to appear. Because normally the park is covered in, you know, trees and grass and plant life, all of which are super effective to Onyx. And currently in this season, it is covered in ice and snow and the wetness and the coldness and stuff. Also not good for an Onyx, but there it is. So that might be because they are trying to push the other species that we haven't seen in certain areas just yet. So I did go over to the park. I managed to capture not one, but two Onyx in the park, which was kind of surprising. And I went on my way. So... Pretty interesting day in Pokemon Go, as I said. Catching a whole bunch of new species and getting some more candies, of course, for certain Pokemon. Something interesting, I saw somebody share a photo that showed they hatched an Elekid, which is pretty cool. Another one of the baby Pokemon from Gen 2. I've heard from a friend of mine that every baby Pokemon apparently is now in the coding of the game and they're starting to hatch, but there is one baby Pokemon that is not hatching yet, and that's Tyro. And as he said, the possible reason for that might be because so far in the Gen 1 Pokemon, Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan have had their own specific candies. How are they going to convert that to Tyro candy, right? Because now Tyro evolves into either or, plus Hitmon top as well. Not sure what they're going to do with that. You shouldn't get complacent just because you have a lot of gym badges. There's always going to be someone who's better than you. And that's kind of the way I want to sort of see things. Like, I think I might have told this story before, but back when I went to the first convention, or my first big convention in the maritime area here in Canada, called Halcon, it was back in 2011, I think it was, the first one that I went to. Um, Dive Bomb's probably the best here. I went down and I had a costume I made for Goku from Dragon Ball Z, and it was just a self-made costume, not really amazingly perfect or anything, I just made what I thought looked good. And I came in second place in the anime division, at Halcon, and I was actually quite shocked and quite pleased with that. I wasn't really expecting anything, and I got second place, so I was quite happy. I think it helped that I got up on stage and shouted out the loudest Kamehameha that I possibly could. That hurt. Back off, Sandslash. Back off. Oh, you're gonna heal. You're gonna heal. Alright. As long as you don't get some sort of quick attack like, uh, quick attack, extreme speed, ice shard, aqua jet, accelerock, which doesn't exist yet. I'm sure half of those don't exist yet either, but anyway, as long as you don't have any of that, Dive bombs got your number. Goodbye, Sandy Slash. But I've said when I hit second place, and got, or I got second place in the contest, sure, I was one point away or one rank away from getting first place, but I kind of didn't really want to get first place because I wanted that, that goal to still be there for me, you know, something to keep me aspiring to reach something better. And having that goal still out of reach, even though it's pretty close, it still gives you the time, or the chance, I guess, what am I trying to say, the mindset, to make yourself better. And, I guess that's what I'm trying to say there, like, being the best of something would be nice, I suppose, but, one way to look at it, if you can't be the best, then always aspire to become better than what you currently are, because if there is somebody better than you, you know there's a level of yourself that you can step up above. If that makes any sense to people out there. I might just be rambling, just to fill up time, as we have a random battle against a Nine Tails. Quick attack. All right, break out of confusion. Thank you. Fly attack. It's not going to be super effective or anything, but I'm thinking probably the better stat for defense on Ninetales is special, so physical shouldn't take the fly attack as well. Didn't do too bad. You know what I'm going to do right now? We're going to Dragon Dance. So what I want to do is start getting some flinches with our attacks. I don't really care about the attack boost. Actually, I could fly now, but I'm going to try the Dragon Breath. We can't paralyze the Ninetales. It did just throw the safeguard up. Oh yeah, you're just going to quick attack right through my uh, speed boost, aren't you? Don't critical. Thank you. Even a critical wouldn't have gotten it. That was 12, I think, and another 12 would have been... Yeah, we had a handle. And we get the critical. We get it. When we didn't need it. Save those for the Elite Four, Majestic. Come on now. You're better than me. Now you have something to aspire to as well, young lady. Gaze on your collected badges and remember the trainers you faced. Hmm. <sighs> Who do we lose Skippy to? 
Oh yeah, random Kadabra. Here I am thinking, which gym leader was the one that took Skippy down? No, it wasn't even a gym leader. It was actually just a random trainer in Mount Pyre. But isn't it kind of cool? I can remember stuff like that. And I'll forever remember certain things that have happened in the Pokemon Moon playthrough, which we did see some pretty interesting episodes of the last two days. Again, I won't say anything here. I don't want to spoil it. If you haven't seen those, you're welcome to go back and check those out. But I'll remember certain things going on. And I'm going to remember those for the future of the playthrough as well, because I've got some, let's just say, some vengeance, some retribution that i got to pull off at some point. I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so where does this lead us to? Do we have to waterfall? I know this isn't the way out just yet. That almost looked like shiny colors for a moment. I don't know if it was just the background being different that confused me or not, but I was really waiting like, is this a shiny? But no, not apparently. Now, I think we need to waterfall up and around. I might be wrong on this. I could be backtracking completely horribly right now. Might be some items though. Actually, there's an item. Run! Oh, I thought it was gonna see me. I trained together with my whole family, every one of us. I'm not losing to anyone. Is this that wind straight dude? They said something about his their uh, grandson was going here to the Elite Four of the Pokemon League. Vito, wind straight maybe? Sends in a Swellow as we lead off with an electric type. Couldn't be better for us. Only downside, if this thing goes for a normal type attack, that's going to hurt. That's a normal type attack. Fortunately, we haven't learned Discharge yet. Why is that fortunate? Because Shockwave never misses. Can you one hit KO? with the shockwave. Your special attack is a whopping 10-something or other. Yes, we can. All right. Cool trainer, what else have you got? Something else weak to electric would be amazingly perfect from my perspective. Wasn't I just talking about you? Now then. Our defenses are terrible. We're switching. I was trying to think, can we handle a psychic attack? No, we cannot. Majestic is our best bet in that case. We can Dragon Dance up, go for the fly attack. Probably the best thing we can do. You're going to copy my natural cure, are you? Well, you're welcome to. I don't really think I'm going to go for any special type of status conditions on you. Don't critical hit. That is pretty close. 124. That would have been a knockout if it was critical. Or wait, would it? No, I'm doing the math backwards. Anyway, I'm going to heal up. Just to be on the safe side. We're going to hyper potion. And don't go for the Psychic again. You're going for the Psychic again. I just said not to do that. Well, here's where I gotta make a decision. Does Majestic have the attack stat to one hit KO this after a plus one attack boost from Dragon Dance? Hmm. Let's try it. This could be the biggest mistake I've ever made. Come on, Majestic! Woo! Way too risky. Didn't need to do that, but I wanted to make this interesting. Get a Manectric in next. Probably the best thing is to switch. I can't learn any Grass-type attacks that I'm aware of, except for maybe Hidden Power Grass, so I do believe Skippy is going to be okay here. Good old Ground-type coming in. Hit me with a Thunderbolt. Or the Spark. That's going to do nothing either. Mud shot, super effective, one hit KO, we are going to flinch, we're going to slow you down. You're going to stop that right now. You are going to stop that right now. And we're going to Hyper Potion. Yeah, we're going to Hyper Potion. I'm going to say we're not going to be faster after one, but we might, you never know. All right, they got three flinches with the bites. They can't get any more based on percentages and the law of averages and just plain being fair. Never mind, we're faster anyhow. Mudshot brings you down. We're not even out of Victory Road yet. Man, this is a long journey. We're almost on the episode, it looks like. But we'll go for one more trainer, I think. Ooh, there's a grass type. Best way to deal with you. Let's get Burrow back in here. Double super effective Leech Life. 20 base power, but we do have the Swords Dance. What would Swords Dance even make it? Essentially doubling the attack stat, so basically doubling the power, so 40. Would that mean I would have to do a plus 6 attack Swords Dance to make Leech Life 80 power? I think. Now, since this thing did just harden, we're only technically sort of at plus 1 attack. But let's see how much the Leech Life can do right now. Plus, it did just growth. I want to try to get some HP back just to be safe.
I want to say, if they didn't harden, I probably would have got the knockout there. So growth is interesting. It only raises special attack in this generation. I think it wasn't until Gen 5 that it started raising its, uh, raising both attack stats. And was it Gen 5 when it started sharply raising in sunlight, or is that Gen 6? I don't know, but growth has actually undergone a lot of growth over the different generations of Pokemon. It's cool to see when attacks develop like that along the way, you know? Better than my family. Is that possible? Sure. 2016, did you see that? That's the year number. Thanks for the cash. I was better than everyone in my family. I've never lost before. I've lost my confidence. Maybe I'll go home. Don't give up just yet. What was I saying earlier? Just because you're not the best at something doesn't mean you can't become better at it over time. You gotta stick with it. See it as a chance to grow and improve yourself. We need to heal. Majestic can use a super potion. That's probably good, though. I'm going to just adventure a little bit further into the cave. Is that the ladder we want to take down here, though? I think it is. got to surf around and get to that ladder. Is there an item? Hidden item? Elixir? I'll take that. Let's try to get to that ladder. We'll call it a day for there. Because I think that does connect to the last area of Victory Row that we need to get through. Don't do these random encounters. Get out of my way. If you're not going to be a shiny Golbat, what's the point? Go on. Shoot. You're just as bad as in Pokemon Go. Actually, that is not true. I barely ever see Golbat in Pokemon Go. In fact, I don't really often see Zubat that much either. Alright, so where does this take us? Is there an item? There's a trainer! Whoop. So, we're not going to fight her just yet. I'm going to save it right here. We're pretty much at time for the episode. I want to say, first of all, thank you for checking out today's episode, everybody. If you liked what you saw, feel free to leave me a like down below. And if you didn't, feel free to throw a dislike and let me know how I can improve these for the future, because I want you guys to watch the best quality possible stuff best possible quality stuff. Hey, one suggestion could be maybe I can learn to talk good. But anyway, if you have missed any episodes of Pokemon Sapphire so far, there's a link in the description to the full playlist, of course. You can go check that out and check out the channel for other videos. We'll have some links at the end of the outro as I'm talking here, showing some more, for example, Pokemon Moon that's going on currently and other things like Pokemon TCG matches. You can also click the link to subscribe if you want to join in and get updates whenever I upload a new video. Generally, at least one per day, unless I sort of get snowed out and other things, you know, come up, life stuff, you know slowing things down, but generally I try to go for at least one video per day, focusing mainly on Pokemon Moon for the time being until we get through the main story in that, but we'll always have weekend episodes of Sapphire until we complete this. But, I guess that's about it. Feel free to leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought of the episode, and anything you want to see me do in Pokemon Sapphire. Once we do unlock the last two fly locations, I'm probably just going to go explore a lot of areas in the region. I guess here's a good question for you, though. When it comes to things like exploring all these sea areas with all the different trainers and such, do you want to see that all done on screen as long as I have some topic of, or topics of discussion to uh, mention in the video? Or should I just go through like a sped up grinding montage as I clear out all the trainers there? Let me know what you think of that, because there could be a lot of boring trainer battles going on at that point. But with all that, we are done for today. Once again, Professor Chaz wants to say thanks for checking out the episode. I am now signing off, and I'll catch you next time.